Didn't know today would be your last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk by through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight it's not my place to question, only God knows why. I'm just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight. Oh. Always made my troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me when I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Well, God just took the only one I So I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight question only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels around the throne The psalmist writes that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cries. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pastor Kelly Sibley. I'm the pastor at the Glendon Community Church. And I want to take this opportunity on behalf of Sheila and Arnie and Vicki and all their family to welcome you. Thank you so much for joining with us as we uh, gather to celebrate Gunny's life. And uh, they do appreciate you being here. Your presence is a source of comfort for those who grieve. And they do thank you for being here. I do have a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, um, I want to extend my own condolences and my sympathies to all of you in Gunny's passing as well. Uh, we also want to uh, recognize that we have some friends that are watching online, and we uh, recognize uh, especially the friends at the Heritage Lodge that Gunny was such good friends with. And uh, all of you who are watching, we thank you for joining with us too. First announcement I have for you is if you have a cell phone and you haven't had the opportunity to turn it off or turn the ringer down, you probably want to do that. You probably don't want it going off during the service. The second announcement I have for you is that there you are all being warmly invited to a luncheon following this service, and that luncheon will be at the St. Paul Seniors. Now, if you're not sure of where the St. Paul Seniors is, uh, we have the big cathedral here in St. Paul, and the St. Paul Seniors Hall is right directly south of it. It's not very hard to find. 
Uh, family wants to uh, announce that there will be a memory well at the luncheon, and it's a chance for you to write down some favorite memories, some of your stories of you and Gunny, and you can put them in that well. They would appreciate that. And uh, also, there will be an open microphone later on during the service. That's an opportunity for you to come forward if there's anything you'd like to share. So I tell you that now so you have a moment to gather together any thoughts you may have. Can I ask you to bow with me in prayer? Almighty and eternal Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and your mercy seat. With bowed hearts and bowed heads, we appeal to you, Lord, to look upon each and every one of us and to consider us. It's a difficult day. It's a difficult time in our lives, Father. We miss Gunny very much. And Father, we just ask that as we seek to celebrate her life, that you'd be with us, that you give us strength when we are feeling that we are weak, that you would give us clarity of thought when we feel we are confused, that you would comfort us as we grieve. You who know us better than we know ourselves, we ask that you would indeed meet our needs, bless us, take care of us as only you can. And so we commit and commend the family to you, as well as this service, asking for your blessing. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I was asked to share the 23rd Psalm with you. Um, I always like it from the Scottish Psalter. David wrote, The Lord's my shepherd, and I shall not want. And he makes me down to lie. And in pastures green he leadeth me, the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make, within the paths of righteousness, even for his own name's sake. And though I walk through death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill, for thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. My table thou hast furnished in the presence of my foes, and my head with oil thou dost anoint, and my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me, and in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. And so reads the word of the Lord. So now I'm going to turn the pulpit and the microphone over to Gunny's children, Sheila, Vicki, and Arnie, and they're going to bring the eulogy. So, Sheila. Okay, on March 28th, 2024, our wonderful mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, auntie and friend, Gunhild Gunny is like she, how she was called all the time, uh, Christine Nelson of Stone Lake County of St. Paul, Alberta, passed away at the age of 93 years. With her caring way, she shared her beautiful smile, soul, and spirit with everyone she met. To mourn Gunny's passing are her loving family and friends. She is survived by her three children, son, that's me, Arnie Nelson, and then I have Vicki and Robert Hickey there, and then I have Sheila to my left. Uh, there's seven grandchildren. There's Eric Nelson, Matthew Nelson, Amanda and Simon Nelson, Candace and Josh Hickey, Rory and Shelby Hickey, Vernon Cherie Gerhardt, and Pat and Nina Gerhardt. There are 14 grandchildren, Natalie, Brantley, Sakura, Lane, Dakota, Justin, Samantha, Devlin, Nate, Jake, Alyssa, Josh, Ryan, and Maya. Supportive family, Dwayne and Kelly Onestrick, and Arnie Bierniska. Viv and Leo Dakin, and Elaine and Colin Barty, Nick Onstrick, as well as numerous loving and caring family and friends. Gunny was predeceased by her loving husband and soulmate, Edwin, parents Arnie and Clara Bjornisgaard, two sisters, Sonia Onstrick and Agnes and uh, Marvin Barty, brother Alfred and Agnes Bjornisgaard, son in law, Ken Parks. Nephew James Barty, niece Rita Bjornisgaard, and other close family and friends.
I wanted to, um, almost all of the grandchildren are here, but Elaine uh, is in the military, uh, Vicky's grandson, so he is not able to be here today. But he wishes he was. He wishes he was. He's watching live as well. So we are Edwin and Gunny's children, and we are going to do our best to honor this incredible mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, auntie, and friend. And as we were planning her celebration of life and looking through her treasured pictures, creating beautiful memory boards, we realized that how impossible it would be to sum up her life in a few short, short pages. So, sorry, going to be... <laughs> she had so many gifts of her character. She was curious, feisty, at times cheeky, and a bit of a troublemaker, because she loved to tease and laugh. She was loving, supportive, forgiving, independent, oh yes, stubborn, warm-hearted, and gave the best hugs, and she never wanted to let go. A woman as beautiful inside as she was outside. But she had a smile so warm and caring, her soul and spirit reaching out to touch the hearts of everyone she met, and a hug that said, I love you just the way you are. She made everyone feel, once they met, met her, that they were worthy, worthy of her attention and love. Gun Hill Christine Nelson, and she preferred the nickname Gunny. Our mother was born on June 22, 1930 in Birch Hill, Saskatchewan, to parents Arnie and Clara Bernascart. <clears throat> Her trip on the way to being born was a long, precarious one. Grandma Bjornesgaard's brothers were the first to leave Norway, sailed to Canada, and eventually made their way to St. Paul area, and once settled, had written letters encouraging other family to come and join them in Canada, the Promised Land. And so, Grandma and Grandpa Bjornesgaard made the big decision to leave their parents behind in Norway, to sail to, in, sail to Canada with dreams of claiming land... <laughs> where as pioneers they could farm their land, build a home, and build a future for the family as they planned. <clears throat> Can you imagine how difficult that must have been knowing that once they set sail, they would never see their parents again? And how would they find the brothers already there? It would be like finding a needle in a haystack. On the boat over to Canada, Grandma became very ill, and Grandpa worried for both his wife and their baby yet to be born. All ended well. Their beautiful baby girl was born shortly after their arrival on the East Coast. Planning to find Grandma's family already settled out west in pioneer fashion, they began their long trip. The trek west was long and hard and slow, but they found their way. Sorry, I just need a minute. I can't see. <laughs> And eventually they found their family here in Canada. They settled within 20 miles of one another and their life in the area began. Hard work, clearing uh, and farming the land, learning the English language, finding a job and creating their family. Mom was the oldest of four kids, followed by Agnes, Alfred and then Sonia. Mom attended Swedeboro School where English was spoken and written. So as a family, the decision was made to speak less Norwegian and learn more English so the children could excel in school. So as we all know, Mom grew into a beautiful young woman. She had flowing long dark hair, a beautiful smile, a gentle yet st stubborn spirit, and a shyness towards any man that first noticed her. Well, when our dad first met our mom, all he first saw was her legs running fast over the hill in the opposite direction, well away from his attention. He used to tease her that he tamed her. Maybe she noticed his hat. Maybe she admired his car, a 1928 Plymouth. Maybe she saw he was handsome. Maybe. But you know, this is, was the beginning of an amazing love story. 
So mom and dad married in June of 1949 and eventually started their family, receiving a gift of a child every five years. So I was born in 1953, Vicki in 1958, and Arnie in 1963. In 1955, uh, or maybe 56, I'm not sure, but mom and dad moved from the town of Elk Point to the farm at Stony Lake, and this land became their home for the rest of their lives. Now, Dad worked as a carpenter a lot of those years, and often his work took him away from home, sometimes months at a time. And Mom, although sometimes overwhelmed with loneliness, and I'm sure all of the children, um, she worked hard on the farm and did a great job of raising her kids. Well, Mom had a lot of talents. Gardening, canning, looking after Grandma Nelson, creating beautiful clothes as a seamstress for others, helping with the far harvest, and looking after the farm animals. Those are just a few of the amazing things that she could do. But as a carpenter, uh, maybe not so much of a talent. As I remember, in our three-room log house, there was a tiny little storage closet. And mom, you know, she didn't always have the patience and she wanted a shelf in that closet and decided that it was time to do that. She wanted it to happen right now. So she measured for the shelf, she sawed it off to length and set about putting it in place. Too long? Oh well, just use the hammer and it will fit in just right. A little tight, but just right. Wrong. That didn't work. She set about hammering it in place. And I, I remember watching her do that. I thought, oh, oh, oh. And I was a kid. <laughs> so she set about hammering it in place, and she stepped back once it was in to admire her work. Oh, no. The shelf had pushed through the wall and had noticeably pushed out the plaster. Mom decided that the best way to cover that was to put a calendar over it. <laughs> and we believe it's still hanging over that crack in the plaster. For our family, financially, we were poor, but we never looked it or felt it. Family in the United States would search out secondhand stores, buy large clothing, take the clothes apart, save the buttons and zippers, and after washing and iron flat, uh, pile that fabri fabric into a box, and when full, it would be shipped to El Point by bus. Mom was so grateful to get all that material. She would create her patterns and make all of us the most beautiful clothing. Well, they'd get the beautiful <laughs> clothing just to be sure, okay? Uh, so, our clothing that she made uh, was with her own hands, and like the coat of many colors, it was always made with love. We didn't have a lot of money, but we were rich, rich in love. With Dad working as a carpenter away from the farm, he was eventually able to buy Mom a car. I remember that I so was soon to get my learner's permit. That's you. I guess that's me. <laughs> yes, she was soon to get it, yeah. Yep. And uh, when Sheila asked Mom uh, if it was hard for her to get her driver's license, apparently it was easy for her. She walked into uh, to the license office. They asked if she could drive, and she said, yes, of course. And there you go. She was told and uh, was handed her license, just simple as that. <laughs> Maybe she didn't have any official driver's training, but she was a good driver. Most of the women in the area didn't drive, so mom would always give them a ride if they needed. Remember Buzz being stamped on the license plate of her car there, so it was appropriately named. Uh, she she bu was called Buzz because she buzzed around everywhere driving. <laughs> she was never home, so she's we buzzed busy like a bee. Times were tough and money tight at times. 
I know, or we know that mom would eat less so she could feed her family. Mom was unwilling to kill our few farm animals just to have meat. So when the canning was gone and, a fish, and fishing a bust and the garden not quite ready to eat and we needed meat, mom took us all out for a walk with her 22. Mom was a dead eye. <laughs> shot with her dead eye shot with her twenty two with a perfect aim, she would kill a partridge, take it home, clean it, and make exactly seven little meatballs or burgers. We also picked up blueberries and Saskatoons and as a family uh, as a family to can, probably ate more than picked for canning. But one of our favorite memories was stepping off the school bus, running to the house, cutting off a big slice of mum's freshly baked bread, spreading on her homemade butter and homemade jam. And it was. It was delicious, and it still is. <clears throat> Although our little log house was cozy, our dad dreamt of giving mum the gift of a new home, <clears throat> complete with running water, bathrooms, and more than one bedroom. <clears throat> It was designed by mom and dad and built using the trees from our land, cut and planed and ready for building. I have to say, I do remember one Christmas, mom's Christmas gift was the chimney. And that was how they, that was the start of the home. Uh, that was her first gift, so I had to build everything around it. And build it he did, proudly with a lot of help from mom and us kids and other family and friends. Mom had no intention of ever moving from the farm or from her house. And happily, she was able to live a full life there until she passed. She was very capable of staying in her home. However, as mom's hearing and eyesight decreased, she became increasingly nervous about being alone in her house at night. So thank you to Matthew, her grandson, for moving into her basement so she could sleep better and feel safer, and as well, help her with anything she might need. I understand, Matthew, how hard this has been for you. It was obvious that you and Grandma enjoyed such a special relationship. I will always remember the note you left on her chalkboard. I love you, Grandma. What a beautiful memory. So, Mom enjoyed a lot of hobbies, including making small crafts, sewing, reading, playing cards, photography, and lucky sevens. Is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah. Lucky sevens. Every time one of us were going near the store, can you pick me up seven of the lucky seven? So she loved doing that. Um, she loved to paint. As you can see, there's a painting here that she actually did right in the middle with her fishing hat there. Paint by and it's not a paint by number. Paint by number. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I think I have it later on in here, but um, her teacher was uh, Ralph Kravenchuk. And um, she so enjoyed that class. I remember her talking about it all the time. But she also attended the theater plays at the Allied Arts Center often twice per year, and I didn't put it in here, but she wanted to sit next to the bar. <laughs> At first I couldn't figure that out, but it was the closest to the food, right there, and easy to get out for the bathroom. But you know what, she got teased about that all the time because she didn't drink. Uh, she made wheat bags for our aching bodies, scrubbies, oven towels, jar and bottle grippers, and it was important to her that every friend, every family member, would be given these special gifts from her. Her love of crocheting almost became a full-time job. But special thanks to Elaine and Colin for cutting the tool. That's what it's called. That really, it's like rough, Krimlin. rough Krimlin. Um, But they would cut that for her. And um, Jerry, thank you, Jerry for rolling all of that material into little balls for mom. His cats loved that. <laughs> so soon the word spread, and she was asked to fill orders for other people. And it definitely kept her busy, often running out and not wanting to disappoint anyone who wanted them. She had to work diligently to build up her stock, as her orders were often for 30 or more. 
Some of her crocheted items even traveled overseas with friends. She joked that the tool fabric she used, because it was very rough, wore off all of her fingerprints. And if she wanted to, she would be able to rob a bank and no one would know. <laughs> but those of us in this room who knew mom, we knew that she was a very moral person. She was honest, truthful, and accountable in anything she did. She also loved, uh, loved, loved the garage sales, and uh, so did her kids. So often we get to, uh, she would try to get to the sales before Sheila mm -hmm. to get the good stuff. And? Uh, and uh, teddy bears. They were both also collecting teddy bears. I think that was where the competition was. It was, yeah. So she and Gord. Teddy bears. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. She enjoyed the garage sales with us, her kids, but honestly, this was more of an opportunity for her to visit with the people she already knew. I used to go a day ahead, try to find where they were and talk to some of the people to just find them. Uh, and if she didn't know the person, well, pretty soon they, they were a new friend. Uh, it was definitely a, a social event for mom. Uh, mom was very artistic in her crafts. And yes, uh, she enjoyed her her art class uh, with her teacher, friend, and neighbor, Ralph Kravenchuk. Uh, she enjoyed this new experience, and what she created was absolutely beautiful. Uh, as Nikki's granddaughter, Sammy, uh, brought to her attention, it is no surprise then that many of her kids, grandkids, and great-grandkids uh, show that artistic trait as well. Uh, it's very much part of her that is shared proudly, and we have been lucky enough to inherit. Mom was a collector, and so was my dad. Uh, they kind of had an ongoing competition there when, when they would go to different sales and that. Dad would collect the vacuums and mom would collect the sewing machines. <laughs> so, uh, mom would save anything that had a memory. So, uh, you can imagine the, memories. the memories that we have uh, managed to to encounter just in this, this last week. Uh, it could be said that uh, it, th that could be a picture that one of the kids made, uh, every card that she received, a dress that she wore uh, at a co-op fashion show, newspaper articles of family and friends, anything that connected to the people, connected her to the people that she loved. Mom saved, any, saved anything that she thought that her family or friends might need. She also helped many families who were struggling, giving away clothes, dishes, and bedding. Mom loved to volunteer in her community, 40 years plus with the Elk Point Ladies Auxiliary with Elaine. 40 years, that's a long time. Uh, with friend Ed Smith at the Elk Point Car Club, eight years <coughs> helping Sheila in the school library, repairing textbooks for the students, the lack Lake Bellevue Quilting Club with Elaine and Kathy, 12 years for the Parent Link Program with Sheila, spring and fall clothing exchanges, heritage and cultural events, Halloween, spooktacular screams, uh, family parties for Christmas, Halloween, Easter, participating on the floats in the parades. She loved being involved and making a difference in the lives of others. And she loved meeting new people in these clubs and events. Lake Bellevue has an amazing quilting club that met quite regularly, and not only for quilting, but for crocheting, knitting, or whatever the ladies might be interested in. Iris uh, was new to the group, wasn't sure what to make of my mom at first. Uh, when Iris came into the group for the friendship and, and uh, to enjoy the, the uh, crocheting, Mom welcomed Iris with a welcome of ha uh, welcome to the Happy Hooker Club. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I am sure that the comment made her think twice about joining that group. <laughs> so Mom enjoyed having company, always sharing her spice cake, coffee, tea, cookies, honey, and telling stories. Uh, all these made her giggle and smile. 
I loved the giggle. It was everybody's favorite. She always tried to give away her good chair to others uh, when they came, as always, concerning about the comfort of others. A new friend never left the house without a scrubby or a crochet uh, or knitted dishcloth. She enjoyed dinner out with family and friends to Silver Star or Taste Buds, and she enjoyed Arby's baked potato. I would have to try and find who had the Swiss of mushroom for her in, in Edmonton uh, so she could have that. She enjoyed the chicken from KFC or the co-op, and that was a real treat for her. Mom so looked forward to the Shanghai Rummy Guard game with the family. Uh, Ken Denega, Jerry, Nick and Sonia, Arnie B, uh, Zach and Kaylee, Jessica and Sh Sheila, uh, and any el anyone else uh, visiting. Mom had a sharp and brilliant mind, and for a lady who was hard of hearing and had difficulty, difficulty seeing well, uh, the lady who kept saying, I never win, really did win often. And Cheekly would say, I guess I'm going to have to get a little bag from all my winnings. Yeah. That was Sonia's as well. So sisters, they shared that. And there was many times that they would play cards until the sun came up and the birds uh, sang their morning song. I remember her coming in about 4 o'clock yep. in the morning. So... So mom and dad rarely missed a rodeo, a jamboree, or a country dance. All the old time bands knew that dad was going to come by, talk to them with a special request for their favorite song to waltz to. It was called a song, and I hope we say this right, called Live to Finskogen. Life in the Finland Woods is actually the English. Now that was their song, although they were both Norwegian and not Finnish. The song talked about beautiful things, their beautiful nature, like the quiet of the forest, the pine trees standing tall, the birch trees swaying in the wind, mirroring lakes, birds, fireflies, the deer roaming on the land so freely, the scent of the earth, and the peace that it brought, like a magic in the air, a tranquil paradise, just like the home and the land that they loved. Time to enjoy mom and dad's favorite song, Life in the Finland Woods. So just close your eyes and imagine them dancing up in heaven. Enjoying every moment. enjoyed every moment just like they're doing up there and before um, Vicki continues never make the mistake children of saying that you're bored <laughs> because I really didn't want to go to the dance you know I didn't know anybody there I'm 10 
And dad said, okay, you're bored. You're going to learn to dance today. And so I danced, and I'll tell you what, I loved it so much. And for the whole rest of the evening and every time thereafter, I never left the dance floor. That's how much I loved it. And dad had a way of holding you that was firm but warm. And I'll always remember that. Did a lot of twirling, too. Yes, love the dances. <clears throat> Mom was always a hard worker. In her younger years, she worked as a cleaner, cook, babysitter at a rooming house, as a waitress at Joe Ma's restaurant in Outpoint, and a line worker at the Lindbergh Salt Plant. When Arnie was 13, Mom started work at the co-op in the fashions department. This she enjoyed thoroughly. Uh, spending her time with her friends and helping others find what they needed. They still search her out. Um, or used to. Uh, I remember Mom telling the story of how after she retired, she had gone to town shopping. It was a particularly cold winter day. She had on her winter jacket, gloves, boots, her big purse. Everybody knows Mom's purse. Purse and a purse. Um, uh, sorry. Seven purses. <laughs> I it once. <laughs> so her big purse was hanging over her arm, and, and she was wearing a toque with a big tassel on her head. She was going about her business when she noticed an older gentleman making a beeline for her, and at the same time calling out to her that he wanted her to help him find a tie. Mom stated that she didn't work there anymore. He didn't even blink. He just took, Ma, uh, took her by the arm and insisted, I need your help. Obviously, he had recognized her and just decided that she was the one who could help him the best. So arm in arm, away they went, Mom helping him and making him a very happy man with his new purchase. That was Mom. Very giving, very caring. All, of you needed, all you needed to do was ask, and she would do her best to be there for you. To Mom, her most important work was being a mother and a role model to us, uh, her kids. She raised us to have moral values, to be responsible and accountable, respectful, caring, loving, and be passionate about life and people. Once again, thank you all for being here. Her relationships with her children were diff different with each of us, yet she consistently showed us loving and caring support, supportive to, of, oh, sorry, supportive of our goals and triumphs always wanting to lend an ear <clears throat> or a helping hand. She was never afraid to tell us how proud she was of us and the people we had become. She was also never afraid to voice her opinion <laughs> <laughs> and what she felt needed to be done. We always didn't listen, and there were many times later in our lives we wished we had. She was very wise. So I have many memories of mom, but I'm only going to talk about a few of them. I was the oldest, and as dad was away working a lot of the time, I did have a lot of responsibility, both on the farm and helping mom with these two <laughs> orangutans. Mom always worried that I would grow up never wanting to have the responsibility of children. But not only did I have the gift of two incredible boys, I have worked most of my life supporting parents and children in my various careers and programs, and I've enjoyed every moment. Arguments, yep, we had a few, because somehow I think I inherited some of that stubbornness that she had. Uh, mostly, it was about the lengths of dresses. Mom preferred that I would wear dresses almost to the ankle, and I remember getting ready for my first date and I had chopped off a good two inches off my skirt and had hemmed and pressed the dress, thinking that she's not going to notice. Well, that was just, she didn't notice for a few minutes, but she noticed everything and was so disappointed in my decision. I hate that word, disappointed. I did not feel good about what I had done, and I was more than sorry, and I remember getting a firm talking to by my dad when he got home respect and listen to your mother. So I am known as the family hairdresser and love, just loved cutting mom's hair. Her hair was beautiful. It was gray, uh, the prettiest gray, and she had such a beautiful wave in the front, if you remember. And that misty gray 
you know, just made me want to cry thinking about that today. And <clears throat> I don't know if I could say this. We found a comb. And when you cut hair, before you wash your hands, you, you know, like you might smell. Um, but, you know, it smelled just like her hair the other day. Uh, so in our old house, uh, we were all getting ready for school. Mom had made breakfast. Uh, of course, she's hustling about. Uh, we had eggs. She asked if I'd eaten my egg. I said, yes, Mom. <laughs> so then she went to stoke the fire. And on top of the last piece of firewood was my egg. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it was just sizzling away, and uh, I got in a lot of trouble. I got a little spank, but it wasn't for wasting the food. It was for the lie. Um, and I have to say, that's the only time that I had ever gotten a spank from Mom, but I, there was, there, you had to do things right. <laughs> that was it. Uh, <clears throat> Mom was always very fashionable, taking pride in combing her hair, her beautiful hair, and how, and how her eyes told it all. No matter how big the problem, you could count on her support. She was a rock. I do have one other little tale. I remember uh, Candace was just a baby. She was only about two years old. <laughs> and uh, I was living in the city, and we had been on the road, coming home. She, I, everything was so bad. I was crying. I phoned my mom to get her support, and she did. She supported me through everything that I had said and agreed and everything. And then she started to laugh. And I said, why are you laughing? She goes, because you deserve every bit of this. <laughs> uh, every Saturday, I would, I would go shopping for mom. Like, she loved to shop, but near the end there, she, she had a hard time walking. She'd wear out fast. So uh, she, would, she would look through the grocery uh, flyers, and, and she'd find some really good deals. But she'd say, I always was a better uh, shopper than her. Uh, and, you know, we'd, we'd uh, just get her out of the house, take her for trips down to the other end of the lake so she could see the lake. Um, and uh, there's times when I took her to see Vicky up in Swan Hills. And one of my favorite memories, you know, like we were going up to Swan Hills and she described, well, this is, your dad made this, your granddad made this, that type of thing. But one of my favorite memories is we were, uh, we were busy driving along and we get uh, going along and uh, basically, uh, I look to her side and go, I, you know, I feel so safe with her in the front seat beside me because now I have an extra airbag in the front. So, <laughs> so that was the common teasing theme. Yeah, now I have two more air, airbags uh, be to, careful, to worry about. Be careful. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, she loved to go up to Sheila's to, to play cards, watch movies. Um, and mom, she was always a hugger. You, you got uh, multiple hugs when you're trying to leave. Uh, she loved the garage sales, um, going to Arby's in, in uh, Edmonton, like, like we had mentioned before. Uh, but when she had something in her mind that she wanted to do something, she stuck to it. and. Uh, it was hard to change her mind. It was just like a bulldog. When she took grip, you couldn't get it out of her mind. Someone else kind of like that. That's not me. <laughs> Boys, you want to step in on that one? <laughs> See, they're wise. They like to stay quiet, too, because they know they'll get in trouble later on. Uh, so if you wanted to hear Mom giggle, you know, I, uh, I usually instigated that, but uh, we have well-trained grandchildren here that uh, did that good uh, bugging her as well mm -hmm. and uh, they may want to share the memories later on but that was awesome I just love to hear the giggle uh, at Christmas uh, at Christmas when we were 
after we had our party up at Sheila's and that, we had to, I had to carry the bags out to, uh, to the car there. And uh, Sheila, she'd ask if I needed a bag, and, and basically I'd just say, you know, I already got one. <laughs> so, so uh, and then she just resolved, oh, you, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, mom would watch out for things. I have hobbies, like, uh, and she'd be watching for certain things that she figured that I might uh, like or need. So she was always looking out for things for me, and it wasn't only me, she was watching out for Sheila and Vicky as well. Uh, and, you know, like for me, I, I collect coins, so she'd always have, uh, if she found a coin, it went into the uh, china cabinet for me to look at later on. Okay. So we learned a lot from our mom, and mom learned a lot from us. Overall, don't, don't you think that we raised our mother well? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Mom was a gentle soul, but not afraid to discipline if needed. As much as she loved all of us, even the grandkids found out that Grandma was no pushover. Amanda had been visiting Grandma and playing in the basement with the dollhouse, but apparently she'd behaved quite badly. So Mom sent her home. Well, Amanda stomps down the outside stairs, puts her little hands on her hips, and with this big scowl said, and I thought today was going to be a sunny day. <laughs> so a precious and funny memory that she remembers, and it's a memory for me that, and that will never fade. Grandchildren and great-grandchildren complete the circle of love. So proud she was of all of you. Yes, she often would mix up your names, but you can be sure that she knew exactly who you were. And every time she got to spend with you, she was totally amazed at the special young individuals you were growing up to be. So thank you for all your teasing and your love for her. And those special times were thought about and spoken about at every opportunity. And we all know that when you find love, it's going to change your life forever. It is not often that you find a love that speaks to everyone without saying anything at all. It just shows. And as a family working on mom's memory board, we poured through those pictures and we found so many beautiful pictures of mom and dad. And from the pictures, it's so very clear that they had more than a beautiful relationship. They shared a love so deep that it was reflected in everything they did together. So whether holding hands, sharing a kiss or laugh, a quiet thought, or supporting one another on a sad day, they embraced one another by holding hands, a hug, a kiss, or a look that said, I'm so proud of you and our life together. Family meant everything to Mom, and how proud she was of all of us. She has a family that supports one another, loves unconditionally, shows that they are proud to belong and willing to do what is needed to keep this family strong. And we won't forget about our chosen family. They are not blood relatives, yet kin in every sense. Chosen connections, woven threads, and with this, our chosen family, our love continues to spread. Every summer, she was so excited to have our cousins from the big city come out to the farm. We played, we worked, we had fun, and after a long day, she would look up, look up, hook up the wagon to the old Ford tractor and take us all to the lake for a swim and a bath. Trouble is, on the way back, by the time the dust from the road settled, we were probably dirtier than when we left, but we all had fun. Um, visiting her friends at the Elk Point Lodge was like a party for Mum. She'd sit at the table with a few friends, have tea, and before you knew it, the table was totally full of her friends, talking and laughing and sharing some good old stories. Since Mum could no longer drive, she often lamented that she couldn't, didn't get out much, but try to catch her at home. That was near impossible. Uh, she was often on the road with someone. Family and friends became her wheels. And in addition to us, her kids, uh, uh, we had a lot of help in getting mom to her appointments 
and where she needed and wanted to go. Uh, she was busy with appointments, but also out and about for fun. So thank you, Elaine and Kelly and uh, Bibian and Jerry for taking the time to be there for her. Elaine and Colin, uh, Mom considers you like an angel. You're more than a daughter, uh, more of a daughter than a niece uh, to Mom. Uh, watching over her, caring and sharing your heart and your ginger snaps, uh, Mom's favorite cookie, and always helping Mom by buzzing her around to where she needed to go. The hour spent cutting her tooled fabric so that she could crochet her scrubbies was very much appreciated. Elaine, she loved you. Your laugh and your hugs. Colin, you tried to give the impression that you were rough and gruff, but she knew better. When mom did manage to capture your hug, it was heartfelt. Special thanks to, Queen, to uh, Dwayne and Kelly. Dwayne, you made life so much easier for mom by moving the electrical and plumbing upstairs and making her beautiful space so she could have her washer and dryer upstairs. And of course, she loved your warm hugs, your laugh, your teasing ways, and always looking forward to having coffee with you. You took her fishing on the boat. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. <laughs> She would call, <laughs> and she would smile. Kelly, with your sharp sense of humor, the boundless energy, uh, you made her days so much better, especially after Sonia passed. Uh, those long days without her baby sister, or not talking two to three times a day, I think it was more. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, they'd talk two or three times a, a day for an hour at least. Uh, and um, at times it was quite lonely for mom. So you're carrying your phone calls, your visits, your teasing ways, you're including her in trips around the community and calling her the queen. My queen. Made her smile and feel so blessed. Bibian, what a friend you are. Mom enjoyed the suppers at Silver Star, your trips to the Burger Bar in Elk Point, and the trips to Saskatchewan to see good friends Wayne and Marilyn Brown. Your infectious laugh made her smile. And thank you, Vivian, for your thoughtfulness. You shared your heart, spending hours creating beautiful wreaths and ornaments for special occasions, bringing mom's life and spirit into your craft with such memories. And Jerry, you came from Ontario 16 years ago looking for a place to live. And you found us. For just a minute, you were a friend, and then very quickly, you became a very big part of our family. Thank you for your caring and your love for mom and for us, and rolling mom's tool fabric into this little ball for crocheting. You know, our family functions, movie nights, Silver Star and family suppers, Shanghai rummy card nights, making tarts to share, and stepping by often step stopping by often to have coffee with mom. The gift of your time is unforgettable. Thank you. Jessica, you became a part of our family. Playing cards, visiting on the weekend, making special suppers, or just watching favorite shows with her. Your smile always made mom smile. Bob and Lorraine, I will always remember your kindness and love for all of us treating us as siblings, and Lorraine for caring and loving mom like a daughter. We all have precious memories of you staying with us in your grade 12 year, riding the bus together, having to get on the roof to put out chimney fires, and helping out on the farm with our animals. Without question or concern, mom and dad brought you into the family. They loved helping you grow as a person and helped you finish your grade 12 year courses. We had no electricity though, but mom made that commitment to help you with home ec. And what she did is she drove you up to grandma's, and they had power to work on your home ec projects. And when mom and dad made a commitment to help someone, they did and loved every moment of you living with us. Mom, you were and still are the heart and soul of this family. Vicki said it so well. She said, life is a dance. 
And we feel, as so many others do here and at home, it was an honor to have danced, to live, to love, and laugh with her. All we really want is one more hug. So, Mom. Love you. Love you more. Love you lots more. And if you're wondering about that, that was, you just didn't get out of the house without her having the last word. Hanging up on you with the last word. She'd even open up the door to try and get the last word in. Yeah, she did that to Eric. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now, I hope you enjoy this Supermarket Flowers song by Ed Sheeran. Decided that we'd, be, we'd play it last because we could never get through the eulogy if we heard it first. Yeah. I took the supermarket flowers from the windowsill through the day of tea from the cup Packed up the photo album Matthew had made Memories of a life that's been loved Took the get well soon cars and stuffed animals Pulled the old ginger beer down the sink Dad always told me, don't you cry when you're down But mum, there's a tear every time that I blink Oh, I'm in pieces, it's tearing me up But I know a heart that's broke is a heart that's been loved So I'll sing hallelujah You were an angel in the shape of my mum I fell down, you'd be there holding me up Spread your wings as you go And when God takes you back He'll say hallelujah, you're home I fluffed the pillows, made the bed Stacked the chairs up Folded your nightgowns neatly in a case John said he'd drive then put his hand on my cheek And wiped a tear from the side of my face And I hope that I see the world as you did Cause I know a life with love is a life that's been lived So I'll sing hallelujah shape of my mom When I fell down you'd be there holding me up Spread your wings as you go And when God takes you back You'll say hallelujah To see the person I have become Spread your wings and I know That when God took you back He said hallelujah, you're home
Well, Sheila, Arnie, and Vicki, thank you for the eulogy. We appreciate it, and I don't think Mum would mind us showing our appreciation for it. Thank you so much for that. At this point in the service, uh, if there are any of you that have any uh, family tributes that you'd like to bring, we're going to open up the mic to you for that, and then after that, we will have an open mic. Thanks. One sec, I'm not gonna find my. <coughs> um, oops. <laughs> My aunt, she was, a luck, she was a special lady, but it's a few things that she, she taught me to crochet when I was six. I think I'm pretty damn good at it pretty now. <laughs> anyway, and there was a couple, there's a couple stories. Um, we were picking berries one day, and we were in the bush with mom and auntie, um, and uh, she says, I'm afraid of ants. She says, oh, don't be scared of ants. Well, they're just little. You're, you're fine. So we went on, and I'm fine. All of a sudden, eh, the scream. I come running out. What's wrong? Auntie let out a scream. It's a snake. Oh, Auntie, snakes aren't scary. <laughs> so, yeah. And then one time we were going to the city. Well, Auntie was taking Dwayne to the city. He always, she always took me, but it was Dwayne's turn. And I was so mad. I sat in a corner and I cried and I cried and I cried and I was making faces. Auntie always brought this story up. I made lots of faces. And she says, I don't care how many faces you make, you're not going. <laughs> I didn't go. I stayed home and cried. Dwayne got to go. Lucky. <laughs> yeah, so. So she was a pretty special lady to me. There's lots of stories I can't begin. And Easter time, she always made sure we had a basket. It was a, a margarine container or a, a sour cream container. She wrapped it in foil and she decorated it and she always gave us a piece of gum, a chocolate. It wasn't much, but it was enough to make us. She was special. And I have a film for her. Um, Auntie Gunny, only aunties can love you like a mother, keep secrets like a sister, Behave like a true friend and kick your butt if they have to. Um, uh, the love between an aunt and niece is one of life's sweetest blessings. I love you with all my heart. Love you always. Yeah. Thank you, Auntie. Love you. Hello, my name is Anne Nelson Gilroyd. My father was George Nelson, Edwin's brother. As kids, Neil and I and Carl would get turfed out of the city and sent to the farm. And we were so glad that happened. Edwin and Gunny both really welcomed us. And Edwin was busy with farming or his job lots of the time. So it was Aunt Gunny that took care of this herd of kids that she all of a sudden had. And she did it so well with so much love and so much joy and so many hugs. It became a part of our childhood that we'll never forget. She was really close to my brother Carl. You could see their eyes light up when they met. He always felt like she was 
his second mother, he said. He told me that many times. He's ha health issues right now, so he wasn't able to attend, and he was really wishing he could be here. One of my favorite stories of Aunt Gunny was, again, out at the, in the summer, and we were terrorizing the whole yard as usual, and we stopped suddenly because here's Aunt Gunny at the chopping block with a live chicken. <laughs> Would you believe she cut the head off that thing? <laughs> we were so impressed. We thought, we really do have to pay more attention to this lady because she was good at it. And then on top of that, instead of holding on to it like she normally would, I'm sure, she let it go and it flipped bloody thing all over the yard. As kids, we were just absolutely mesmerized by that. And I started thinking, oh, maybe we should be paying more attention to her. So on behalf of my brother, I would just like to say we're all going to really miss her. Um, my sister Jean is here with me today and my sister-in-law Marilyn. And we're so glad that we could be here and listen to the wonderful stories. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have something to read from a very special um, woman, my cousin, Elaine. Hope I can get through this one. A letter to Gunny. Dearest Gunny, you will be very much missed by so many, your family, your many, many friends, and by me who was lucky enough to be able to claim I was an honorary daughter. Although our world right now is much sadder since you've been gone, to honor you, we must and we will remember all the good times that we were so lucky to spend with you. Sleepovers at the farm were wonderful times. Yes, so you can just, just imagine how many kids are coming to the farm over the summer. Here's another one. As kids, you often took us all to Bonavista to swim and play. And I remember warm summer days sitting in front of the old house and shelling peas by the pailful, as well as tipping and tailing beans. There was always something to do during the day. Playing or working didn't make any difference. You made it all fun. And then one by one, we'd all take turns in the tin bathtub that you filled with warm water heated on the stove. Then, clean and tired, you served us big bowls of puffed wheat with milk and brown sugar before bed. And those days are the treasures of my mind. Always you canned and preserved everything you could get your hands on. The bountiful gardens you raised never went to waste. And your generosity you shared with family, friends, and neighbors. You taught by example that in giving, we receive. And you also taught us the importance of family and the importance of working. But working with all the family around us, joking and teasing, made it so special it's like it wasn't work at all, and it was times to treasure. We made pierogies by the pailful and small breath, which is a Norwegian flatbread, small breath, by the platefuls. You enjoyed reminding us of your Norwegian heritage, and because of you, we were proud too. Your remembrances of your childhood were precious stories that you often shared with all of us. My favorite was how you would send my mom, Agnes, being the younger sister, down the path first on the way to Sweetboro School because you were afraid of partridges. But she did get even, remember? Okay? We ate many partridges. But often, you know, like sending her, her sister down so that they wouldn't scare her, that often backfired because mom would simply disturb them and then they would fly up at you as you came along. So in later years, when the roadrunner wasn't able to drive anymore. You often tried to pay for gas or buy a meal when we took you someplace close for an appointment or shopping. I would tell you that I was still trying to even, to even the scale for all the things that you had done for me. Just so you know, the scale is still unbalanced, Auntie Gunny. I could never repay you for all the meals, 
the hugs, the kindnesses you have given me, and the life knowledge you shared. I hope you know how much I will always love you. Your hugs were the best, and as the memories run down, the memories run down my face, please know that I will always remember your welcoming smile and the wonderful way you laughed. I miss you, Gunny, and I always will. Your gentleness, your humor and kindness made you the special person so many of us will remember forever. Although my heart is aching, I take comfort in knowing that you were met in heaven by countless family members and friends who are so very, very happy to see you. Until we meet again, you will always be in my heart. Rest well. You've earned it. I love you. Your niece and honorary daughter, Elaine. I'm Candace. I'm one of Gunny's granddaughters. A couple of weeks ago, we got to come down and surprise Grandma, just Josh and I. It was a last minute decision, and we got to surprise everybody and plan it with Auntie. And I will never forget Grandma's laugh when she was bugging Josh, and then she looked at me and she goes, you know, Josh, if she gives you any trouble, you better let me know, because I'll tune her in. And I'm sure there was one time at Thanksgiving when we had come down, and she's like, you know what? If you don't treat him right, I'm going to marry him instead. <laughs> so I've learned that Grandma's sense of humor was something to truly... Sorry. <laughs> It was just, it was everything. Those, there were so many memories with her, with her sense of humor <laughs> and her laugh. And the other day when we got to come down, Josh and I had taken Grandma up to Auntie's for dinner. And right when we walked in, the look on Auntie's face when she got to say, well, guess what, guys? You're not the only engaged couple in the family anymore. So Nate and Shannon, just know that the look on her face to hear that you guys had just gotten engaged the day before meant so much. And I was so honored to be able to see that, to pass that on. And then there was one other thing. We really came down to help auntie and uncle and mom and the first day down at the house I found a picture frame I'm gonna try and get through this without crying as well oh, sorry can't see <laughs> thanks uncle <laughs> Oh, family. The family is one of nature's greatest masterpieces. The best inheritance parents can give their children is the gift of themselves. A sharing of their hearts, their love, and their time. Family is the link to our past and the bridge to our future. Now, I have no idea where she got this from, but that was everything to Grandma. Thank you. I guess I'm the talkative one.
Jess, do you want to come up here? No? So I'm Josh, uh, the one that Gunny proposed to over Thanksgiving. And uh, the wonderful father of Sammy here, Justin, Dakota, Lane, who's currently in Borden, and soon to be husband of my lovely wife, Candace. Um, Justin wrote something for uh, Grandma Gunny, and Justin would like to say, I liked playing cards with a great grandma because I would help her win. I also liked her spice cake. I don't know, Justin, I think she beat you all those times. Sorry. Okay, I guess I'm the talkative one today as well. Okay, Sam, this is Sammy's letter, a letter to Grandma. My great-grandma, Gunny Nelson, was an incredible woman. She was kind to everyone and... Most. And most always had something kind to say. She gave the best hugs and loved all her family and friends dearly. She knew very many people. She was a very thoughtful, artistic, giving one woman. Gunny Nelson meant so much to so many people and will be dearly missed. She had such a sense of style too. She was an amazing woman and she will be missed. Sammy. Hi, I'm Heidi. Um, I've been part of Grandma Gunny's family for 13 years, and I gave her two beautiful great-grandchildren, Natalie and Bradley, and the day that I met Grandma Gunny, Eric brought me into her house, and the hug that she gave me was so warming and inviting, and I did leave. <laughs> she took me in as part of her family with no judgment, and definitely love. And she stayed neutral and gave her opinions like a badass. <laughs> she definitely was. She cooked, she cleaned, she helped with my kids when I needed an extra hand. And she always told me that she didn't want to be a burden when she needed to go somewhere. And I didn't drive right away, but Eric did, and Matthew drove. And oh, she was never a burden for us. We loved to spend every day with her as much as we could. Eric was on the road quite a bit, and so I spent hours and hours with Grandma, sitting in her living room and talking and having play dates with the kids. She loved being a grandma, absolutely loved it. And I just want to say that I'm definitely gonna miss her smile and her laugh, but her hug. That is the one thing that I will miss the most, is Grandma's hug. <laughs> she was a great lady, and I appreciate the job that she did raising Sheila and Arnie and Vicky, because they took me in as part of their family and showed me the same love. <laughs> I have a letter from Brantley, who is my son. His letter reads, I remember when I went over and we always talked 
Every day she called and said, did you teach the teacher anything? <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> I went over for three hours some days. I was her mail boy, I delivered her mail, and she let me have a cookie. Those stolen cookies always got him, always. She had the best cookies. Cookies, jam, always. And yeah, definitely the canning, always the canning. Me and her always watched game shows and always tried to guess the words. He was very good. Brantley is very good at trying to beat people at whatever they're gonna say. And grandma loved hearing his voice. When we walked in to grandma's house and Natalie and Brantley would go talk to grandma, she was like, those are the best kids to hug and to love. I'm sure that Natalie and Brantley have a very special place in her heart. Natalie's gonna be 12, so for 12 years, that place in her heart grew 10 times more than what she already had. And we are all going to love and miss her but she will never be forgotten. So this is Natalie, she has something that she's wrote for Grandma. Needless to say, you saw her mom up here, she hasn't got the height near yet that her mom did, she kind of exceeded that. So she's going to try to read it and if she needs help I'll be here to help her. And then I also have two memories myself that I want to share. Hi, my name's Natalie and I will be sharing some memories of my grandma. All the time when I was done school, I would go over to my grandma's house, or when I stayed home, she would call and ask if me and my brother were okay. My grandma was one of the best grandmas I could ever have. She was my favorite grandma, and when I cleaned her kitchen, she would be happy, or when I vacuumed her living room or laundry room, she would be proud. Now you just gotta work on your own room. She would be so proud of me cleaning her house. And she taught me how to crochet and I would, be, I would peel potatoes and when she was in her chair, she would ask what I was doing and I would say, I'm doing crafts or something at the table. And I made her cards every week. But when it was time for me to go back to my house, we would do a war of who loved each other more. And I would be like, love you grandma, have a good day. And then she would be like, no, I love you more. And I'm like, no, I love you more than that. It wouldn't stop. 
So that's everything that Natalie has wrote for Grandma. Okay. So, good memory that I have of my Grandma is when I was about 15 years old, my dad put me in charge of out in the field cutting hay. And, well, lo and behold, I dropped the hay bine into a hole, broke the sickle, break down, and I lift the sickle up, and I look, and I've got thousands of these little garter snakes crawling the ground. I've got a five gallon pail. I'm like, well, they're going to die if they're out here. I'm going to take them back to home, release them behind the house, and they can go to the lake. So I have a half a pail full of garter snakes. I put it in the tractor. I come home. I get out, and Grandma wants to talk. What broke on the tractor? Well, then Dad distracted me after that. So I put this pail down on the porch. <laughs> it's got a cover on it. I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, this is good. About half an hour later, this most blood curdle scream comes out of the house. And I have never seen my grandma move this fast in my life. <laughs> and the only thing I got was I could hear it in her voice. She was ready to kill me. <laughs> and the only thing I said was, I got it. I will take them away. And she says that if you bring them back, I'm going to hurt you worse. <laughs> so... Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so that was one of my best memories that I had of grandma. Now, my second memory was is shortly after I got my license and I was driving truck. Grandma called and she needed a ride to town. So here I am driving grandma to town in her little Volkswagen, Buzz 410 right across the license plate. Everybody knew her as the road runner. Here I am going, 105 kilometers an hour. And I get beside me. You can't speed. You must slow down. So fast forward a little bit. Can't speed, you name it, get back home. I have to leave for work. I pull out of the yard and pull in a set of tankers going back up to Fort McMurray. And lo and behold, about three miles from home, I'm being passed by my grandmother. <laughs> so I get up to Fort McMurray, I turn around, delivered my load, came back to home, I walked right into her place and I go, so speeding, eh? <laughs> and she goes, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you cleared 120 because I tried to step it up to catch you and I couldn't. <laughs> so the laughing joke was, she's like, well, let's forget about the speeding and just drive safe. <laughs> That would be everything for me. Thank you. Yep, thank you. So I'm Vern, I'm the eldest uh, <clears throat> grandchild, and um, we're, we're gonna all miss grandma very much. Um, I have two stories. Um, well, a thought first. Um, Grandma and Grandpa, <clears throat> I remember them together. They were an amazing couple. So when I think about how I should act as a husband and a dad and, uh, and eventually as a, as a granddad, and probably a papa. I prefer papa over granddad probably. A little cooler, I think. Uh, I think of them. Um, and how they treated each other with such tremendous respect. So, um, my, my fun little story with Grandma is, is we all know Grandma didn't drink, <clears throat> or so she said, but she'd come to the cabin. Uh, we have a cabin, I don't know, 20 minutes away from, from the place, and uh, we'd invite them out for campfires, and, and uh, I'd ask Grandma if she'd like a beer every time, kind of jokingly, and she'd go, oh no, I can't drink that much of a beer, and so... I'd have a red solo cup. We all know what a red solo cup looks like. Well, we had these little red shooter solar cup, solo cups, and we'd fill that with beer for her, and she would nip on that all night, thinking that <laughs> she couldn't have any more than that, or she would go home drunk. So, <laughs> so it kind of <clears throat> came a bit of a tradition, and I would just pour her her red, little mini red solo cup full of beer, and, and uh, we would cheers each other and, uh, and laugh. And the last thing I just wanted to mention is, is you, you mentioned Grandma's giggle, and, th and that is one thing that I will always remember, and I, uh, I hope we can hear it again on a video or something, because uh, I'm going to miss it. 
my name is Patrick Gerhardt. Um, I'm the second oldest uh, grandson. <clears throat> um, or my other name is called Trouble, <laughs> according to Grandma. Every single time I move, she's, what are you doing? She's looking around. She thinks I'm going to pull some kind of practical joke on her. If anybody knew Grandma, she had these tiny little doll shoes that she wore all the time. And I had no idea how she got her feet in them. And I would bug her constantly about these tiny little doll shoes and where I could get a pair. And uh, she's like, well, I don't think you can because they're too small. I'm like, well, I could just take yours. And, uh, and she would laugh and that giggle again. And then um, again at the cabin, we're at, uh, we're at the fire and she had, she, she couldn't, she had forgot her glasses. So she's wearing her sunglass, prescription sunglasses at night at the fire. And so here I am, grab my sunglasses out of the car, and I'm sitting, all of a sudden, sit beside her. And she turns, and she's like, what are you doing? You look ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> so do you. And she forgot, she forgot that they were her sunglasses, prescription sunglasses. It's hilarious. So then everybody grabs sunglasses, and we're out on the fire, we're all wearing sunglasses. And it, they were in their house wearing sunglasses, just constantly. She just one of the most kind, amazing women. Okay. That would just love you as much as she could. Thanks. <laughs> and if there's any more of you that aren't family who have anything you'd like to share, we'll let you have a chance at the mic right now. I know that you all probably have lots to share over the luncheon, so I'm just going to take a moment and I'm just going to ask you to bow with me in prayer, if you would. Father God, as I do at every funeral service, to take this opportunity now to, uh, to speak on behalf of family and friends for Gunny, and just to thank you, Father, for the lady that she was. Thank you, Father, for the blessing of knowing her. Thank you, Father, for all of the joy that she brought into our lives, and we thank you, Father, for everything that we've learned from her and for her character and her nature. And, uh, Father, for those moments when uh, we, we long to see her face, to hear her voice, and that's not there, Father, just ask that you would hold us close and help us look to one another. I'm sure within this family there are many who may have a turn of phrase or a twinkle in the eye or a smile on their face that would remind us of Gunny. Just ask that you would bless us with fond memories. We thank you for her life. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was visiting with the family and everything they were telling me about Gunny, um, I scribbled down in my notes Psalm 30, or Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 31. These are from the sayings of King Lemuel. And it says, A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field <clears throat> excuse me, and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. 
In her hand she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. And so reads the word of the Lord. I um, I like to start by giving my condol- my condolences to all of you again in Gunny's passing. She was indeed a dynamic lady whose life touched the lives of many people. I uh, also need to thank uh, Sheila, Arnie, Vicky's family, the rest of you, all of you who have visited with me. I appreciate it very, very much for um, helping me prepare for today. I always enjoyed a quick visit with Gunny. I always remember that genuine smile of hers, that twinkle in her eyes. She was always upbeat, always positive, always willing to talk. So I would, I would share with you that some of the things I learned, and I'm not going to share with you everything I have here. You've heard it all in the eulogy. But the things that came to my mind that I wrote down that I think of when I think of Gunny is I remember her as an idealistic lady, that she was always in a good mood, kind, generous, well-respected, trusted, loved by many. And not only was she idealistic, but she was independent too. And as you heard the family, uh, they used words like stubborn. Um, She was tenacious when her mind was set on something. But she also lived in her own home, you know, pretty much all the days of her life, which is remarkable for someone who's 93 years old. Um, She was a proud Norwegian. Well, I have to tell you this joke. Um, For those of you who don't know much of the history between Norwegians, sorry, between Norwegians and Swedes. There's a bit of a rivalry that goes on there. So I'm going to tell you a story about two Swedes who are working for the town, Hugo and Nils. And folks that are watching them are noticing that Hugo goes and digs this hole and progresses on to dig another hole. And in the meantime, Nils comes along behind him and he's filling the holes in with dirt. And this goes on for quite a while until finally one fellow walks over and he says, what in the world are you doing? And Hugo says, well, he says, we're doing our work. He says, but you're digging a hole and he's filling it in. It's absolutely pointless. No, no, he says, we work as a three-person team, but the third person who plants trees isn't here today. (laughs) So there you go. idealistic and uh, independent gunny was also an interesting lady filled with plenty of hobbies crafts talents under her belt she was very also very involved as a member of her community and uh, did so many things idealistic independent interesting involved and i also came to learn that she was an incredible matriarch a mom a grandma who had an incredible love for her kids her grandkids great-grandchildren, the rest of the family, and friends. In 93 years of living, there's a lot to say about Gunny, and there's plenty that hasn't been said. Yet for all the things and more, our dear friend is going to be missed greatly, and she is always dearly loved. Faith was an important part of Gunny's life, too. She began her church life in the Lutheran Church, and then the United Church. In later years, Gunny didn't go to church very much, but she always had faith. Scripture says that we've all sinned and that we've all offended God with our sin. And we all fall under the Father's wrath for our sin. So we need to be saved from that wrath. And while church is a very important part of the life of any believer, attending church is not what saves us. 
We have the church as a means to worship our God, to have fellowship with one another, to get to know God better, to get to know ourselves better in Christ. It's like an extended family. It's a way of meeting together to get built up in our faith. But attending church does not save us. In order for us to be saved, just as Gunny was saved, what we must have in order for our sin to be atoned for, and we must be as holy and as righteous as God himself. Some people believe that if they are good people, if they um, become someone who is as, as respected and as loved as Gunny is, then they'll have earned the right to go to heaven. But unfortunately, there's nothing that we do to earn the right to go to heaven. There's nothing that we'll do that is ever good enough. Scripture says we've all sinned, we all fell short of God's glory, and it says that the only way to be saved from sin and from the Father's wrath upon us for sin is that we must be cleansed of that sin. It must be atoned by a perfect, sinless sacrifice, and that's none of us. Because we're unable to do anything to save ourselves, we praise God that he did everything that we couldn't do. That the very Son of God became flesh for us, lived a sinless, perfect life in order that he could become sin for us. Jesus went to the cross. He bore all the sins of all of those who are his people. And he also bore all of the Father's fury and wrath for that sin. He made the only sufficient and satisfactory sacrifice that could appease the Father's anger for sin. And by his sacrifice, the faithful are cleansed of every sin yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But we're only saved from the wrath of God if we have faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. Your sins are atoned, the righteousness of Christ is imputed to you, and you will be saved only if by the grace of God you have faith in Jesus. And there's no other way to be saved. There's no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. So may he grant us his grace and enable our faith that we would have the eyes to see and the ears to hear and a heart that is softened to accept the truth that Jesus is Lord of all. Then by grace and through faith, we'll have a new life in Christ here in this life, but more importantly, in the eternity that is to come. By faith, we can look forward to the day when we too are going to be called from this life only to rush into the arms of Jesus and enter into fellowship forever with the Lord and with our loved ones who have gone on before us in faith. And I want to assure you that because God gave her the grace to have faith, that the moment Gunny passed, that's where she's been, safe in the arms of Jesus. I want to encourage you that that's a reward she received. She's been given the crown of righteousness, and she abides there in paradise in the love, joy, and the peace of God. And may we all have the grace of God to come to faith in Christ, to be saved, and to one day join Gunny and all of our loved ones in paradise forever. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father God, I take this opportunity to <clears throat> lift up all of Gunny's family to you. I just ask that you would bless them and hold them close. A big part of their family has moved on to glory. Gunny leaves a, a tremendous hole in the lives of many. And so, Father, we just ask that you would fill that with your love and your grace and your peace and your comfort. Hold your children close. We know you will as a loving Heavenly Father. And just ask that you would bless them. Bless her friends as well and her community. And, Father, we just ask that you would hear us as we take a moment to gather our voices together to lift up the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, it's the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just before I pronounce the benediction, we all want to remember to a little bit of laughter. Hugo and Nils, the two Swedes. 
They're down by Elk Point and they're on the bridge of the North Saskatchewan River and they're fishing. And suddenly this funeral procession comes over the crest of the hill and starts coming down. Well, Nils immediately reels in his line. He takes his hat off. He stands at attention with the rod and he faces the funeral procession as it drives by. Hugo looks at him and he says, Nils, that's a very nice thing you did. Nils turns around and casts out and says, well, I was married to her for 37 years. <laughs> there you are. Larry Lofstrand's going to kill me when he hears these things. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for the opportunity that we've had to gather together for this funeral service, for this celebration of Gunny's life. Father, as we leave from this place, as we go over for fellowship around a memorial meal, we ask that you would bless us as we um, are there and bless the food to the nourishment of our bodies, bless the hands that prepared it, and bless us as we fellowship. But as we leave this place and as we go forward in a life without Gunny there, we ask that you would go with us in the person of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Dismiss us, we pray, in your fear and with your blessing. And we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be our portion this day and forevermore. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Sweet, so weird.